is helpful to us if we are using this AWS. So yeah, uh, what fall under this management tools are this cloud watch. So what what is this cloud watch? This is something which monitor resources and applications. So you know you don't have to particularly manage or monitor your applications. Instead, you can just do the same with this cloud watch. So it monitors your resources and your application. And like if your application requires, you know, some additional resources, it will automatically scale those resources to your application. So in that at that particular point of time. So yeah, cloud watch is something which monitors your whole application. When it comes to this AWS auto scaling, it enables you to quickly scale your entire application on AWS. So uh, when it comes to this uh, scaling thing, it enables you to quickly scale. That is, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it can, so what can we tell about this? So yeah. It, uh, you know, it, uh, get to know your application in depth and it will automatically scale the infrastructure required for your application or the resources required for your application. So, uh, it, it's in its name, but it is in its name, right? Auto scaling. So, you don't have to, you know, give the, uh, you don't have to give the, resources uh, required for it or the infrastructure required for it. So once after you give your application, that is once after you put your application in AWS, it automatically, you know, get the resources required for it. And when it comes to this cloud formation, cloud formation is something which creates and manages resources with templates. So anyway, uh, we'll look at it uh, in detail, but this cloud formation already have many templates actually. So based on our application, we can use the template, which is already in it, uh, you know, if it matches our requirement. And the next one is cloud trail. So cloud trail is something which act user activity and API usage. So if you are using any APIs, so with this cloud trail, it tracks you on the, like it tracks you on your API usage. And uh, you know, with, uh, with this tracking only the billing part is actually done. So it also tracks the user activity in the AWS or in the services or in the, you know, in the services thing. And also it tracks you or based on your API usage. And the next one is config. So coming to this config, it tracks resource inventory and the changes. So yeah, what it does is it tracks this uh, resources inventory and changes. That is, if you are using a few resources for your application, and if you want any further, you know, if you want any uh, extra resources, or if you want to change your resource, or if you want to change the resources which you are using for your application. So this config tracks all these things. And when it comes to, when it comes to this off work, off work is something, you know, it's a configuration management with Chef and Puppet. So we'll get to know it in the, like, uh, when we go in detail about this. And we have this service catalog. So what is meant by this catalog actually? So, this catalog, you know, it contains all the services or uh, like if you go to any uh, any shop or any supermarket, they have the, they have their own catalog. So what is what is there in that catalog? So in that cat catalog, they have all the you know the uh, giving us uh, you know they'll just put what are all the services they can do or what are all the products they have. So this is this service catalog is something related or uh, similar to the catalog which we generally use. So it create and use standardized products. So in this catalog, we can actually you know put the products or the resource uh, or the services which we can provide. 
and we have the system manager. This AWS system manager is a central place to view and manage AWS resources. So for any application, we will like we require many, uh, you know, we require uh, to like uh, a few AWS service resources. So some one or some system should manage all these AWS resources which are being used for our application. So this is that person that is the system manager is a central place to view and manage AWS resources. And we have a, a trusted advisor. So when it comes to this trusted advisor, it optimizes performance and security. And for, um, you know, we have this managed services. So this managed services here, it, uh, op, like, it manages all the IT operation management for this. So it is the IT operations management for the AWS. And now we'll just, you know, we'll just uh, look at uh, a brief service or uh, we'll just look at what are all the developer tools or the management, sorry, the management tools. So coming to this management tools, you know, right. So what are these management tools? So manage, uh, what falls under this management tools? So coming to this, uh, coming to the word management, it means that you have to manage or you have to organize and you have to take care of all the services or the, you know, Or the task you know, development and operations combined is called DevOps. And we have the scaling governance, we have this management, the cloud rate, and you know all the resources required in, all the resources required for your application and the so all this falls under this management tools. And we will we'll also be looking at some of the use cases with the and also examples to uh, uh, you know for the better understanding of what are all these management tools. So let's take this example. You have an application. So in the experimenting phase, you have two developers and a few instances of your application and a one particular and one app, and you have hundreds of API actions. So when it comes to this product launch, you know what happens? You will be taking another developer. So three developers. And here you here uh, you know so in the experimenting stage we have few instances. So in the product launch, you uh, for you know for uh, better reachability, you will be doing updating them to tens of instances, and you have few services and uh, hundreds of API actions. But uh, when it comes to this phase, six months after your product launch, so in order to meet the uh, Customer services, you will be having tens of developers and the tens of developers, several apps and services, and thousands of APIs, actions, and tens of customers. And when it comes to a phase 12 months after your product launch, so you have several teams and tens of applications, you know, uh, uh, hundred thousands of uh, API actions and the hundreds of customers. So this is how actually a product. Uh, you know, a product life cycle in the market is. So, so far we have just seen the growth of a product or an application in from the experimenting phase to an year after this product launch. So here we have like, a, you know, whenever we, our, our product is being used by many customers or many users, we have to like uh, we have to be, we have to make sure that we are ready to, you know, double or uh, we have to increase our infrastructure because this uh, customers or the users are increasing. So, you know, but uh, like uh, yeah, the simple thing is you have to increase your infrastructure actually. So here we have to enable new users to experiment and make mistakes so that we can learn from like we can just track the activities there. And uh, if 
on increasing users or on increasing uh, you know customers you have to make sure that your application or your service is supported like is supported on various devices so various devices access or use a cloud or you can actually use a cloud and uh, you should also you like you, you should be providing them the self service access to infrastructure and also this global workforce so yeah we, we can uh, so what are all the challenges involved uh, in you know once after your product is in the market and uh, you are getting a large number of users or customers for your product, uh, for your application so you have the several new developers some of them may be new to aws you have to train them like you just uh, like uh, if you are hiring any new particular person to work on our work on your application or your project in aws first thing is you have to make sure that this person is you know well sound or you, you know his uh, he has uh, some idea he or she should have some idea about this aws services so once they are familiar with the aws services then you can train them on their application and mistakes can be very expensive yeah so because we are using this uh, uh, you know cloud model that is uh, pay as you use if you are if you have like if you are making any mistake is very expensive because you are falsely using any you, are, you know you are falsely using any other other service system other service center and keeping developers productive becomes harder so yeah so easily they, uh, let's take an example so easily you are having an application which is being used by something like 75 or let's make it 100 so 100 users are using your application right now so for this 100 users uh, like for this development on this uh, management managing thing you have a team of five members now so uh, these five members are enough for handling the 100 users and now we are uh, you know the number of users are increased that is from 100 to take it uh, something like 500 so to, in order to handle this 500 customers now you have to increase your team so okay you have uh, hired a few people and you have trained them on their application and now they are working it's fine now so initially that is in uh, uh, previously you are having a five member team team and the other one uh, who is managed uh, or you are the ceo of your company so you are having six members team so including you so this six members this whole six members team will you know is more productive because you are the core team of your application so you will be working continuously to deliver a quality you know output and you know when it uh, what generally happens is if your product is uh, you know if your product is into the market and you are getting a uh, good response and uh, uh, an increasing user increasing users or increasing customers uh, count on increasing customer count it is like generally there will be a quality you know there are many quality issues actually because you are making some money right so whenever uh, you start making some money automatically your focus on quality decreases so because uh, your main focus will be you know moved or shifted to make money so here uh, you have hired this new developers so these new developers are not uh, in, are not that motivated to deliver this quality product i mean quality output so that means the productivity may decrease actually so just keeping developers productive it becomes harder you know and operating and shooting numerous flavors so yeah in order to handle uh, this uh, increased users or increased customers for your application 
or your uh, you know uh, your product you have to scale up your infrastructure based on uh, this uh, no, you know, suitable or uh, based on your requirement and then so you know for that you have to operate and troubleshoot various i mean a particular unit various units which you are working on and noisy slack channel so yeah this is something where we deal and uh, you know uh, this is where we operate and uh, we communicate with all the resources so there has to be some medium right which uh, where all the resources can communicate so for this thing you have uh, you know what are all the options you have is decentralized and hope and log on and approach so when it, uh, like if you go for this decentralized and hope the first one is self serve experiment and innovate so it's good if you you know if you only try to like uh, you don't hire any new people and you six month yeah six number team is trying to handle this 500 customers so that so in that point you are doing an experiment experiment actually and uh, you are trying to you know use your resources and uh, in a in a more in a more efficient way actually to handle those uh, 500 customers and uh, you promote to promote agility agility and uh, you know this day of this year because this development development and operation path are both combined, combined because uh, yeah 14 is working on this application well in terms like well in terms intention but uh, you know it's, uh, it's sometimes dangerous because if something goes wrong you know your whole work uh, is a waste actually Compliance subjects to interpretation by new users. So this, uh, and when it comes to this lockdown and upload, you will be giving them this full control and reduce experimentation. Like if you are adopting to this AWS, what you'll be doing here is, you will be giving this AWS the whole permissions to take care of your application. So what you can do is, you can just scale, like you can just focus on, uh, you know, your product output or your uh, project output and you can focus on the marketing thing so here what you will be doing is you will be giving full control to the aws here so you know uh, it automatically leads to this reduced experimentation right and reduced agility and scales to number of approvers so yeah uh, like this aws is a you know ex experienced team right so here uh, you can actually with this cloud you can reach to as like you can reach as many people as you want and uh, you know and appealing to developers so if you adopt to this aws you know you can still manage to handle you can actually handle 500 not even 500 you can actually up to 5000 people with this cloud if you go with this aws or any cloud resources So coming to the CWS management tools, they are standardized, decentralized, and monitor. So a self-service provisioning with these templates and catalogs is provided. So in the catalog, they will be giving you what are all the things they are, uh, you know, what uh, the CWS will be providing you. Monitor health, usage, and configuration compliance, and prevent severe issues, and act immediately on bad events. And standardization is a key element of the scalability. So yeah, coming to this management tools here, we can actually see this thing, right? The first one is resource provisioning. The second one is configuration management. And the third one is monitoring and performance. The fourth one is governance and compliance. And the fifth one is uh, resource optimization. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, coming to the resource provisioning, you know, it is an automatic infrastructure provisioning using declarative templates. And when it comes to this uh, configuration management, it is a package installation that means the software and the resource configuration and the system patching. And when it comes 
so there's a monitoring and performance monitoring alarms and dashboard for metrics you know for, for this billing track uh, bill tracking things and all this monitoring and performance will handle all these things the fourth one is governance and compliance so this is a uh, you know this is a uh, this resource inventory uh, configuration change tracking user activity and aws api call uh, recording and the self service id catalog for the organizations and all and finally when it comes to this resource optimization it is an automated recommendations to reduce costs increase performance and improve security so now we'll look at uh, resource provisioning so what fall under this uh, resource provisioning are aws cloud formation and aws this uh, service catalog so coming to this uh, aws cloud formation what is this aws cloud formation so cloud formation gives developers and system administrators an easy way to create and manage a collection of related aws resources provisioning and updating them in an orderly and predictable fashion you know and uh, uh, no additional charge to use actually and what can you do with this cloud formation so you can create templates of your own infrastructure uh, uh, version control or code review and update templates like code provisioning aws resources based on this dependency needs integrate with the uh, development management tools and when it comes to this example so administrators can uh, author templates the developers can use uh, devops admin can use code pipeline integration to enable uh, see the infrastructure use cloud formation designers in json or yaml to provision resources uh, leverage this uh, serverless app models that is this good at to improve this dev uh, development experience and change sets and cross stack references to enhance cloud formation stack management capabilities so we have uh, many templates here uh, uh, by default in the aws so we, we can see here uh, this aws cloud formation templates now so cloud formation simplifies provisioning and management on aws you can create templates for the service or application architectures you want and have aws cloud formation use those templates for quick and reliable provisioning of the services or applications also called as stacks you can also easily update or replicate the stacks as needed this collection of sample templates will help you get started with aws cloud formation and quickly build their own templates and now we uh, so yeah templates and snippets by aws services reference implementation samples application frameworks and experimental and community samples community samples so when it comes to the service catalog so, so uh, what falls under this first thing is uh, resource provisioning or this cloud formation and service catalog right so we are we have seen this cloud formation and now we we'll look at the service catalog so what is the service catalog private catalog for organizing best practice patterns sorry and uh, launching infrastructure and software services on aws in a controlled and repeatable manner it enables cataloging of infrastructure as a code as product with versions so what can you do with this service catalog you can quickly deploy approved it services in a self service manner delegated by admins create and govern catalogs of it services on aws described as aws cloud formation templates and when it comes to this uh, you can see uh, many examples portfolio portfolio is nothing but a collection of templates or products available to a user 
for admins, create a portfolio of products and services, APIs to list and uh, provision uh, products, manage versions, uh, portfolios, access, and more for users, uh, APIs to view and manage uh, manage launch products. It's nothing but so you can actually relate your catalog to something like a dashboard where in the dashboard uh, it will be giving you what are all the services you can use and they can provide and what are all the products uh, which they have launched uh, that is uh, indirectly you like uh, which all are which all you can use. You can share products and portfolio across AWS account within your organization. And the next one in the management tools are configuration management. So this AWS Ops Work and EC2 System Manager falls under this configuration management. So what is this EC2 System Manager? So it is a set of capabilities that enable automated configuration and ongoing management of system at scale across all of your Windows and Linux workloads running in EC2 or on-premise or on-premises. So these are a set of capabilities that enable automated configuration and ongoing management of your systems across all like uh, across all of your Windows or Linux workloads. And it is available now at no cost to manage both your EC2 and on-premise resources. So what can you do with this EC2 system manager? You can perform common administrative tasks remotely at a scale, remote uh, and understand and control this current state of your EC2 instance and OS configurations. Simplify your OS patching process. So here, uh, you know, uh, administrators or IT managers can use seven capabilities. The first one is automation. So with this automation, it simplifies common maintenance and deployment tasks such as updating AMIs. So that is this Amazon machine images. Uh, when it comes to, uh, with this run command, it enables you to remotely perform common administrative tasks at a scale. With parameter store, centralized location to store, access, and reference your configuration data. State manager, it defines and maintains consistent OS configuration to comply with your policies. Maintenance window, define a recurring time window for administrative and maintenance actions. Inventory, collect and uh, query configuration and inventory information about software installed on instances. Patch manager, so select, it selects and deploy OS and software patches automatically across large group of instances. Use same tools for on-premise servers, enhanced run, run command with rate control, error resource, etc. So here with uh, you know with this AWS services we uh, we have this is something like a catalog right uh, so here it will be showing you what are all the you know services they will be providing you or uh, you which like uh, what are all the services they are eligible to use for your application and uh, you know with the, this builder solution here we have this uh, tutorials. Uh, to use those applications. So AWS Opworks or Chef Automate. So what is this AWS Opwork? It is a managed Chef server and Chef Automate. So the suit of automation tool that gives that give you workflow automation for continuous deployment, automated testing for compliance and security with Chef. So the Chef server gives you full stack automation by handling operation operational tasks. So what can you do with this uh, Chef Automate? So with this Chef Automate, uh, you can automate such software and operating system configurations, package installations, database setups, and more. Define configurations for your server in a format that you can maintain and version just like your application source code. 
So uh, define desired uh, configuration of EC2 instances or on-premise servers using cookbooks, tap into Chef community by way of over 2,000 different cookbooks. Chef workflow gives you this continuous deployment workflow for developing, testing, and deploying cookbooks. And they help you write and apply compliance tests again against your notes. So yeah. So the third one here is a uh, monitoring and performance. So this Amazon Cloud Watch falls under this monitoring and performance. So coming to Cloud Watch, what is Amazon Cloud Watch? So Cloud Watch is something like a monitoring device or monitoring services. So it is a monitoring service for your cloud resource and applications. Cloud Watch helps you gain visibility into resource utilization, app performance, and operational health. With CloudWatch, you can monitor metrics and logs generated by AWS services or your own applications and services and get alerted when potential problem occurs. So here, it is, uh, it is something like a guard uh, or a person, uh, you know, who is managing or monitoring all your services. And uh, Whenever any problem or any uh, error occurs, no, it immediately calls you. Like it alerts you uh, by telling you that uh, your like uh, there's a problem in your application or any uh, or uh, error occurred in your application or something like that. So what can you do with this CloudWatch? It collects and tracks host, app, or custom metrics. It collect, monitor, and search log files, set alarms that alert you when problem arises, create dashboards to stay on top of your application, react automatically to events in your AWS resources. And when uh, for this example, it monitor resources you have uh, provisioned with CloudWatch metrics, CPU load, disk usage, and several standard metrics to operate effectively. Enhancing dashboards, added new virtualizations, CloudWatch logs to aggregate log information for applications, AWS services, and uh, CloudWatch events to react to meaningful events in systems. So yeah, that's it for today's class. And uh, we'll look at this, uh, the remaining things and we'll just, uh, you know, go through what to like uh, uh what uh, how to use these things and uh, how we can monitor or uh, all of our you know resources or uh, applications here so we'll just make a small uh, you know of this cloud trail yeah, we'll just look at this cloud watch So yeah, in the previous sessions, we have created this uh, bot, right? Uh, you know, with this, uh, like with this lamp called, I mean, AWS Lambda, that is uh, we have run our application by just uh, giving our code, right? So here, uh, AWS code for bot Lambda, created time and what's the status, and AWS code for bot, that is the updated version here. Upgrade completed, description is a Python, and about, uh, about the description about the project. That is a Python web service deployed uh, to AWS Lambda. So something like this. So this is how, you know, this cloud formation, you can actually see uh, all the, you know, applications which you are using. So, and when it comes to this CloudWatch, you have, this is your CloudWatch, uh, you know, homepage. 
where you can where you have this uh, alarms billing events logs metrics and everything etc and coming to this cloud trail management we have uh, you know the, uh, here uh, you, you can view you, you can view events for your business accounts create a trial or to retain a record of these events with a trial you can also create even metrics and etc so something like this so we'll just look at the remaining two services or uh, you know the remaining two elements and we'll just go through each and every like each and everything which falls under this uh, management tools that is cloud watch or the scaling formation trial config of of work service catalog system manager personal advisor and this managed services so yeah that's it for this class thank you